So we're talking about speed. Put a bicycle, motorcycle there because I used to work on making motorcycles go insanely fast. Uh, oh, that's just something I pinched off the web. I like. I thought it was an imaginative use of uh, used aeroplane parts. Make motorcycles, not war. So, who's been out the front on the river? You see the Pollywood side? It's a, one of the last of the sail, great sailing ships. What was one of the most important things? Ways of making money in the days of the sailing ships. Import spices and tea from China, take them across to London, and the fastest ships were the clipper ships. And they got the spices and tea to London while they were still fresh. So the rich people paid a, pro a premium to get the product fresh. Most profitable way of running the business. The equivalent today in Sydney, there's a frock shop that offers three hours delivery. So you're sitting in the audience here, if this was in Sydney, you get a date, comes in on your smartphone, you can immediately order a new frock and you can be out the door at five o'clock with a new frock ready for your date. The site doesn't mention discounts. They don't have to because people will pay a premium for speed. That's the ship that used to dock just down there. And that was coal-powered steamship. Steamships were slower than the clippers, but they had a constant speed because the clipper could run into two weeks of no wind. There were products you couldn't put on sailing ships because you didn't know how long they'd be at sea and the products would go off. But with a, a steamship, you knew exactly how long it would, it would take to deliver it. So delivery times and all those sorts of things, great. So you want to know when you're developing web pages, you want to know that they're fast and you want to know that they're consistently fast. Incidentally, that ship is a Werfer. My grandfather used to be a pilot in Melbourne Harbour. He used to be on that ship and that's where my mother learnt to walk. First time she stepped off the ship was to go to school. Shopfast was a, one of the first successful grocery shopping sites in Australia. They used to have below average speed. They would get no registrations because the pages were so slow. And the no registrations meant no sales. They asked me to do something, so I made it above average speed. They got people registering. They would get people shopping once. And above average speed works when people are buying one product, but when they're going through ordering 100 products, every few, half a second on every page is multiplied by 100. So I came back and I made it way above average speed. They got a thousand percent increase in registrations, a thousand percent increase in sales, and their bottleneck, bottleneck became the warehouse. Couldn't get product onto the trucks fast enough. So speed makes a difference. What do your customers want now? They want more than a search. They want to re you to remember previous searches and let you improve on them. They want to shopping for shoes. They want to look up Masala because it's the colour of the year. They don't want just a choice of red, green, blue, that sort of thing. So you're putting a lot more code into your site and you've got less chance of caching the code. Everyone says, oh, cache your output. But when, as you, every time you add more detail, more choices, there's less chance of, of something working in a cache. Your customers want personal settings. I want shoes that are size 10.5, 4E. Um, no preservatives. Left handleable. Left handleable is a really important accessibility issue because 75% of the population are limited to their right hand. Left handers learn to use both hands because most of the products are right handed only. So we should 
by law make all products left-handed so right-handers will learn to lose, use the left-handed. All right. So we move on to Drupal 8. There's performance issues. That link takes you to a page where they're talking about regression issues. So if you're working with Drupal 8 betas and you find something really slow, please report it. Someone might do something for it. Drupal 8, big work on cache, make caching faster. They've got this uh, tags edition. It, it will, it's designed to make deletion of cache entries faster, but it's a long text field. So when you do a deletion of cache entries, you've still got to do a search on a column. That's the sort of thing they put in there. So an ID might be values node one, and it's got these two tags attached to it. Instead of trying to say delete values colon node colon asterisk or do a like, you can just say do like node values and delete everything. Sounds fun. What I'm hoping in Drupal 9 is you'll be able to say, I want to store stuff by user country. So I'll get a cache called cache user country. It'll be indexed by user, country, primary key. I'll be able to have a custom cache for exactly what I'm storing. It'll be instant to access. It'll be instant to delete, change, whatever I want to do. But cache is not everything. Uh, Yahoo say you should reduce the number of things on your page to make your page faster. In Drupal 8, it's going the opposite way. What it's doing is splitting the page up into little bits. There's more collective junk the first time you download a page, but things like blocks can be cached separately so they don't have to be reloaded on subsequent pages. So it should only be your content that gets reloaded. So they're going the opposite direction, but in theory it will add a little bit of speed. After all these tricks, you still need faster code. You're going to have more code there. You're doing more for customers. You're doing more custom processing for them. You've got somewhere the code has got to run faster. Here's a comparison of various frameworks and ways of doing things. On the left, you've got something written in C code or assembler, super fast, 100% efficiency. Then you've got PHP using an opcode cache totally optimised for doing whatever it's delivering. Then you've got various frameworks. The, that one there is Hip Hop, which takes, which is, we'll talk about next. Um, and over here is Symphony version 2, which is what Drupal 8 is using. So, We've got over here a lot of very slow processing because there's so much code brought in for everything we're doing. It'd be nice to make them run faster. So some choices coming up, which we're going to talk about. Uh, H HVM, Hip Hop Virtual Machine, the replacement for Hip Hop, PHP 8 and Zephyr. So. HHVM, backed by Facebook. They brought out Hip Hop. It was a pig to use, really complicated, difficult. They re engineered it, HHVM. And they, they actually made it nice. You can, it's, if you're not into administering your own servers, you can go on to test environments that contain it. And what it does is, when, it, when no, normal PHP runs, it goes into memory, gets compiled into P code. This compiles into a much denser code, smaller, lighter weight, and it runs against a virtual machine that they've designed so they can put optimization into it. It's 98%, 99.8% or something compatible with PHP. Symphony version 2 works. Drupal 8 almost works. Add-on modules. There's a few things that they've got to 
change in code to FIP. It's available now. Uh, performance gains are similar to PHP 7 and some of the other things out there. I haven't used it. And I know people who have used it have got very varied results. There are some things that Facebook have made it a lot faster and some things not faster. PHP 7 has produced, gone a different track, produced on average about the same speed increase. Uh, but it, when you look into detailed code, because they've done it differently, they make different parts of your code faster. So there was a PHP 6 and a PHP NG being worked on side by side. Anybody ever look at the projects, the two PHP projects? Yeah, okay. PHP NG became PHP 7. And what it does is cut down on memory usage. Makes your code faster because it's smaller use of memory. And when it's accessing data, it's faster. So the uh, hip-hop type approach was to make your code faster. This is to make that data faster in memory. And when they're creating data structures in memory, it's much more efficient, smaller. It's faster to access memory. So your code might, if you're running something purely in code, it might be slower than hip-hop. But if you're going through a big array, sorting an array, so it'll be faster than hip hop. There's it's a basis for additional improvements. PHP 7 is similar to Drupal 8. It's going to three levels of versions, and there's going to be some additional, like 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. I haven't used that either, but it's due about the end of this year. So the end of this year, I have a choice of hip hop, PHP 7, Symphony 3 will be out. <laughs> so whether um, Drupal 8.1 might go to Symphony 3, I don't haven't seen how much different Symphony 3 is going. So at the end of this year, going to be a lot of options. Zephyr is the other thing that we're going to look at. Um, there was a project called Falcon. Falcon version 1, they wrote an MVC framework in C, compiled it up. It's insanely fast. It's about halfway between nothing and Symphony. It's, it's a medium-sized framework. I would have liked to have converted Drupal 7 to Falcon. But be a lot of work. Uh, the tests that I've run, it's close to bare metal processing. It's, uh, it looks like uh, if, if you were to go through all the different um, frameworks, it's good enough to do a shopping site, but I, I wouldn't, I, I'd put it up against something like Drupal 6 or Drupal 5. You could have converted that easily, but when you get onto the, the complexities of what they're doing in Drupal 8, it doesn't have all, everything you need for Drupal 8. All three approaches, uh, hip hop, PHP 7, and Zephyr are all moving to static variable types. And the big, the big slowdown that you can't get around in conventional PHP, every time you work with a variable, the first thing PHP does has to say, hmm, is this a string or is this an integer and so on? So what's happening in all these rewrites of PHP is an option to say, this is an integer. I'll work with this purely as an integer and PHP, or the code internally, doesn't have to check whether it's a, 
It doesn't have to convert quote to quote into an integer two because it's, it's always going to be passed around as an integer two. And that's the next big speed challenge. That means changing your code to specify the data type. So I'm hoping they're going to do that in Drupal 9, make use of one of those three technologies. In PHP 7, they're talking about having static variables but not immediately or not, not a comprehensive solution. Hip hop, there's, there's mention of it. I haven't looked up the fine details. I have used it in, the, in Zephyr. Now what happened with Falcon going to Zephyr, the people writing Falcon in C thought it was too difficult. So they started writing a compiler from PHP to C and then compile a C into Falcon. And then they were looking through PHP and they said static variables. Let's introduce static variables and everything within you uh, Falcon could be passed around as static variables and that lets it run faster. They still support old style variables so you can use old style code. So Zephyr should be a nice easy replacement for PHP. But, but then they started getting too zealous and someone said, oh look at this uh, JavaScript style array syntax, let's use that with no support for old PHP syntax. <coughs> so, you've got to change your syntax. So, converting from PHP to Zephyr is no longer an easy task. You'd only do it for code that's used frequently and you do just a small part. Now, for something like Drupal, I'd convert the boot bootstrap code to it. There's, uh, Zephyr is slightly behind the PHP 5 stream. It's about PHP 5.4. So that's, that's, if you want to get all fancy with interfaces and stuff, it doesn't support some of that stuff. I'll give you a quick example of, of what it's like. You sort of create a directory, you create an, an outline, and then you do normal code editing and, and a compilation. So, create a directory somewhere. I was going to convert Drupal 7 to Zephyr, call it Drupal 7. Uh, the fir you, first thing you do is say Zephyr init and you give it the name of your project and it creates an outline. And this, this is the outline that you get your code will go into that directory. There's some, the stuff here is internal to uh, Zephyr. There's, there's this configuration file. You can change it. I've never had to change it when I've been experimenting. Then you create code. That's a classic hello world type thing. There's some hard coded rules about upper and lower case. It's approximately, if you follow PSR coding conventions, it's approximately PSR 1. Drupal's, Drupal 8 went through the big conversion to PSR 1, then PSR 4 came out. They went through the big conversion from PSR 1 to PSR 4. This is still at PSR 1. Then you do a compilation. You say build. It reads all those files, does stuff, asks for your password, installs the compiled result as a PHP module. And you then have to edit PHP any to tell it to use the module. Now your code is a binary, running at binary speed. When I've tested 
some conversions of code. I've, I've created some incredibly slow pages that have a lot of code going around and around and around. So they take five seconds to e execute. So I can put in micro time and show the start time, the end time. And when I run it in as a, an extension like that, often it, the start time and end time is about the same. It's so small that it's at the level of inaccuracy of timing. That's for things that are executing in code. Uh, they haven't gone through and, from what I can tell, and, and changed the array structures. So if you're comparing it to PHP 7 on code that does a big array processing, it probably wouldn't be very far ahead. But for, for anything that's running a lot of code, it's way ahead. Um, oops, don't want to say out of sequence. Right, so the, the, the new ways of making PHP faster, they're all looking at getting close to executable code. Zephyr is the fastest, but it requires most code changes. Hip hop's available now, you can experiment with it now, and it works. Or I think things like exec you can't use. It's a very small list of things you can't do. But it doesn't do much for large data pro array processing, variable processing. And I haven't looked at the extent where they've gone in terms of specifying static types and stuff. PHP 7 will be easier to use when it does come in. It will use less memory. If you've got a 32 megabyte Drupal 7 and you convert it to Drupal 8, you'll be told to use 64 megabytes. And when you get up to Drupal 8 beta 6, it will crash and you'll have to go to 100 megabytes. So having PHP 7 bring that memory usage back down, possibly, if you're using PHP, uh, Drupal 8 with PHP 7, you might get back to 32 megabytes. So I'd prefer to use PHP 7 to hip hop. And I won't be converting sites to Drupal 8 until the end of this year, and, and PHP 7 will be out at the end of this year. Uh, static variable types. I've experimented with them in, uh, in Zephyr. Makes a difference. Uh, the experiments I was working with were code was using lots of integers. And they were integers that were coming in as strings, being presented as strings and sometimes passed around as strings for various reasons. And I converted the code to immediately change them into integer, keep them integer everywhere until the actual point of display. It, it made a noticeable difference. Just change a few integers. It was not enough to measure accurately. Uh, and when I got on to big arrays of variables, I think P PHP 7 looks like it would do a better job. So I'd like to, s I'm hoping Zephyr will get all the features that have been put into PHP 7, it, the, the two of them, put them together and maybe make the uh, PHP 8 put some things from, take every, all the good points of Zephyr and put them into PHP 8. Yeah. I've made the presentation nice and fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've spent many, many years working on code and I'm working on hardware speed before that. I built the world's, world's first programmable hardware cache and I forgot to patent it. <laughs> I actually offered it people 
a, it's an open source design, both the software and the hardware. And at the time, there was no open source design. So nobody took it up. And about 10 years later, all these hardware companies started going, oh, let's build hardware caches. So, and now, of course, every disk that gets delivered has got a hardware cache in it, and just about everything's got caches all over the place. Uh, if you think of questions after here and you want to send them, anything about Zephyr, I'll answer. Anything about hip-hop, well, I don't have hip-hop running anywhere, but I'd love to hear from someone who is using it with Drupal. Uh, that, that's where that photograph came from of the Werfer. I couldn't find my mum's photographs of when she was a little kid on it. We're going to questions. I've got some industrial uh, hearing loss. You can't actually sue a shotgun for damaging your ears when you're a kid but you can sue businesses that have noisy machinery. <laughs> so that's why I call it industrial hearing loss. <laughs> yeah. Question? Before Zephyr, there were several PHP compilers, yeah. projects to compile PHP to an intermediate language that will be like C or C++ and then compile it to binary. Uh, none of them had support and they always stayed too far behind PHP. Someone came along and said, let's build an MVC framework, let's do a compiler. Well, before that, they said, let's do a PHP framework and let's write it in C. So all these people using C and PHP wrote a framework. That's Falcon. If you look up Falcon, heaps of pages on it. There's a framework and there's a CMS called Falcon I, which is built on the Falcon framework. And there's, uh, the Falcon documentation's also got a nice little record shop as a demo application. Then the people working on that said, why don't we write in PHP and compile the PHP to C, then compile the C to binary. And they appear to have written their compiler from scratch. They haven't used the previous two projects. And along the way they've said, let's put in static uh, variable types because that's a real problem in PHP processing and someone said I don't like array syntax let's use square brackets and I find it much much nicer to work with arrays in that syntax but I hate having two bits of code doing the same thing with different syntaxes I'd rather use rubbish syntax with that everyone's doing the same and then, of course, now we're all using JavaScript, so much JavaScript, we're, not, we're using two syntaxes anyway. So I'd, I'd be happy for PHP to switch to the JavaScript syntax and then these young kids that have come in and who've learnt JavaScript first, it's easier for them to learn PHP. So the, I haven't seen much support for Zephyr because Zephyr... Six months ago, Zephyr was only 96% compatible with the PHP or something. There's a checklist. What they're doing is bringing out Falcon version 2 written in Zephyr and there's a checklist uh, of all these tests, uh, compatibility tests and they got up to I don't know, 95 out of 100, then 96 out of 100. So they're only working on compatibility with Falcon so that Falcon version 2 will be running exactly the same as Falcon version 1. And they're not trying to get compatibility with Drupal or anything else. Have you any I experimented with it. I wrote an automatic code converter 
and the Drupal 7 code is so bad <laughs> that I gave up. In Zephyr, everything has to be classes and every class has to be its own file. And if you go into the Droops, the Bootstrap, the, the, the Bootstrap code file, bootstrap.inc, there's several classes. There's spaghetti code, horrible. So con converting that automatically is not possible. It's beyond, oh, well, it's not possible in my brain, not even with three cups of coffee. So I, ch I then did Drew for eight and I started converting uh, Symphony version two. Symphony version two has, has got some beautiful rules about how the code should be presented and 80% of the code fits their rules. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of legacy code. So there's a whole lot of code that doesn't convert easily. And when you write a rule to change, let's say you've got $x equals array, that might be written three different ways. So I'd, I stopped doing that. And when, you, when you're compiling up in a namespace, like you've got Symfony, Component, um, XYZ, it was too difficult to do the whole of Symfony. So I went down to one of the components, I think it was HTTP request. And I s thought I'd just do that. But even with the, the, f the first two components I c selected, both of them had good code and bad code structures. So it wasn't easy to convert. And I put in a request on the Zephyr, um, this is Zephyr forum, or a Fal there's a Falcon forum on LinkedIn and I put in, someone want to work on this? Nah. Well, someone want to help me with regular expressions? Yeah. Regular expressions is worse than venereal disease, from what I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> do them yourself. You want someone else to have to work on the regular expressions. Oh, so nobody volunteered. But if you try and work out something like $x equals array bracket, n bracket thing, and convert it, and you allow for comments at the end and all the different things that can be inside the array and all you want to do is convert array opening bracket to a square and the end closing bracket semicolon to a closing bracket the square bracket semicolon but the combinations that you can find there you've got to go across multiple lines of code and stuff and that's way over my head for regular expressions so if, if, if I had access to a regular expression guru, I could probably do it. You can't do it with regular expressions. Hmm? You can't do it with regular expressions. <laughs> it is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did, I did some string splits type things using explode and all sorts of stuff. And uh, it worked where for simple examples, but complicated examples, I just gave up on. So uh, I'd, I'd say 50% of the code you, can, you could convert automatically and the other 50% you'd have to do it by hand. And I think if you, if you had a team of two or three people on each component in Symfony, and we only use about eight components out of, of, of the whole of Symfony, there's only about eight components or ten components in Drupal 8, and if you had a little team on each one, you can convert them and compile them up. Because in terms of name space, when the module, you're compiling a module that goes into PHP, it can be the end bit of a namespace. So you can have your namespace of Symfony component HTTP requests. You can just, com where I showed you Drufer, instead of Drufer, you, you can compile, you can name it HTTP request and just do that section and someone else could do another section. And you could have a big team doing it like that. What's the most frequently used thing in Drupal 8? I'd, I've never profiled it. But if you found the most frequently used class, you could just compile that class by itself. Boom. It's running at machine speed. Fabulous project for someone to do. And 
They might not even have to know regular expressions because it's only on a little bit of code. You change the file name to and in dot uh, zep, I think it is, and you take out anything that's not a class, anything that's not PHP. Uh, it doesn't do anything with the comments. Just it throws everything, a lot of things away. There's uh, all the features. I think. It, it might be PHP 5.3, but not 5.4, or 5.4, but not somewhere, closures, interfaces, somewhere about there, some of the things that uh, are missing. So in Symphony 2, you'll have some code where it'll have a, a namespace, like you're passing a parameter to a function, a method, and it'll have a namespace, then a variable name, namespace is saying this should be an object of a certain type. That's not, uh, that doesn't work yet in Zephyr. So you have to take, throw away the namespace. Uh, the static types are purely integers, string. There's about uh, the five static types. But for that, ch converting s strings to integer and just passing around as integer, huge gain in performance there. Uh, Binary is a static type. So for the most common things that I do, I could convert to static types. I don't use all the features of... I, I compile... I use PHP 5.6, but I don't use all the new features in 5.6 or 5.5. And I, I think Zephyr handles everything from 5.3. So maybe there'll be, like, 12 months from now, It'll support 5.4 and 5.5 and so on. And uh, so it's it probably running a year behind Symphony. And what's the speed like to compile? Just from PHP oh. to Symphony? Like, how long does that take to compile down? Alright. That build process, it uses PH PHP to convert from from Zephyr to C and it's so fast that first part of the message comes up, boom. That's compile, that was compiling I think 20 classes or something like that. And it's just blink, that's, that's on this little Toshiba. And then it asks for your password so it can install and that's just stuff happening in the background. So the C compiler is compiling very fast because it's very small optimised code and the PHP conversion to Zephyr is very fast because it's not doing anything really complicated at this stage. It's, I guess because of things like the variables in going into, the parameters going into a method, they're, they're not yet supporting namespaces so they don't have to go off and do lots of big cross-referencing and stuff. So it, that part's blindingly fast. I'd rather have the extra features and l have that take three seconds instead of three milliseconds. Uh, who's volunteering to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, if, if you're in Sydney, I'm happy to sit with you and let you help you run it. Uh, there's a fabulous... Um, documentation on Falcon and there's almost their documentation on Zephyr. The f there's a falcon.org, falconcompiler.org, something site for, for Falcon and it's got the sort of, the level of documentation similar to Symphony. The Zephyr one, they've just got the bare minimum documentation and where do I have it? I think I put the reference further back somewhere. Zephyrlang.com. Uh, if, if you're happy with the command line and you're happy with editing PHP on your local 
development machine. You follow that. That's that's all I've, all I've read. It's about 20 pages. It tells you what to do to create a working example. There's a whole lot of things that it doesn't yet tell you, but it's enough to create a working example and try it out. And there's a whole lot, there's a few things. I had to went converting. Uh, symphony, there was a whole lot of things I couldn't find in that documentation. So if you want to write code from scratch, perfect. So you're all, all going to install this as for homework. <laughs> the in installation, uh, you install Zephyr on your machine from Git. I found it because I've used Git before, I found it really easy. I just cloned the repository, and it's just running PHP command line in your local directory to do the compilation. Then it's just doing compilation to C. Then it's doing a normal compile. Uh, I've also installed Falcon from Falcon 1.3 and Falcon 2 from Git, there were some problems with them, but the actual Zephyr, boom, went straight in, beautiful. You could actually do it in the break between now and the next presentation. That's <laughs> 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 uh, so it. Uh, we've, we've got to do static variables to get more speed from PHP, make them optional, do it. This, this is way of the future. We'll get everything from Zephyr and put it in PHP 7 or 7.1 or 7.2 or 8. Okay. <laughs>